a SharePoint document library provides a centralized location to manage, access, and store your files from anywhere. And when used effectively, you will learn that the traditional methods of storing and organizing your files in a folder and hierarchy method are outdated and lead to many errors like misplaced documents and inconsistent naming of files. In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you my top 14 tips to help beginners get started using a SharePoint document library so that you can put those traditional methods of filing behind you and increase your team's productivity. Tip number one is how we can structure our document library effectively. And when I was managing a rapidly growing property management company, this was the first question that our team discussed when we decided to move our documents from Google Drive to SharePoint. We were already paying for an office subscription, so it made sense for us to benefit from seamless integration as well as utilize the Microsoft 365 stack more effectively. So when we create a document library, I like to take a step back and look at the big picture. To create a document library, you first need to create either a SharePoint site or a Microsoft team. And I would recommend organizing these by departments, project and client. And the reason for that is because when you create a site or a team, you are automatically creating a Microsoft 365 group where you will define permissions and invite team members. So by organizing your groups into departments, projects, and clients, then you are managing access to your files more effectively. One thing I do not recommend is creating one 365 group for all of your organization's documents, because then that would mean that everyone on your organization would have access to all of your files, including ones that would be confidential. What I would recommend, for example, is to create a finance group and only inviting people within the finance department to that group so that they can have access to your financial and sensitive documents. Additionally, we are able to invite external collaborators into these groups. So if somebody was mistakenly added to a group, then they would have access to all of your files. So by breaking down these groups into departments, projects, or clients, then you are enhancing your document security and minimizing the risk of information leaks. And when we create these 365 groups, we get the document library as well as some other apps for collaboration, such as a OneNote notebook, a group email address for communication, and a Teams calendar for ensuring that everyone is on track. You'll also benefit from integrations with other apps. And when you create content in any of these other Office products, then they will inherit the permissions from that 365 group. So this is the big picture that I like to think about when we are creating that document library. And the key takeaways are to think about your permissions and members. Tip number two is to create our document library. So from the app launcher, we can either go SharePoint or Microsoft Teams. I'm going to use SharePoint, but it is a similar experience within Microsoft Teams. So from the top here, we will go create site. And then here we are going to define a team site, which is a private space to collaborate with your team. Whereas communication site is to engage with a broad audience. So a bigger part of your organization. We'll go team site. There are some templates here, but we will just go standard team. This is a preview. So we will just accept the template and then give our site a name. At Amy's Animal Shop, we are planning a Monster Dash Halloween party. So I will call this the Monster Dash party. You can give it a description. And then here is an email address. So this is that group email that we talked about earlier. And this is your site address, which we will dive into in just a moment. On the left hand side, there is some information about that Microsoft 365 group. So as we already know, the OneNote notebook, group email address and team calendar. So if we go next, then this is where we can define our language and privacy settings. I'm going to keep this as private so only members can access this site. And I'll accept the default language and then create site. From here, we can add members. I'm going to first create my site and then we will add those members later. So here is our SharePoint site. And on the left hand side, we have documents, which is our document library. And there's also our documents here. 
So you might be wondering, what is the difference between a SharePoint site and a document library? So we can think of SharePoint sites as an internal website for your team to share resources. And if we look at the URL here, this is that site URL from that site creation process that we just looked at. And then within this site homepage, on the left navigation, we have conversations, which is access to that group email address, as well as a notebook, which is access to that shared OneNote notebook, and then documents, which is our document library. So the SharePoint site is also a place to organize all of those different components of that Office 365 group. And the document library is a component of that SharePoint site where you can store and organize all of your team's files. If you'd like to learn more about how to create a SharePoint site, then I'm including another link in the video description. Number three is how we can add basic folders and content. So if we go up to the new dropdown, select folder, we will call this social content. We can select a color and then create. And then within this folder, we can add subfolders. So we'll go new folder. We can call this one Facebook. Give it a blue and then create as well as another folder. And this one we will call YouTube. Make that one a light red and then create again. Now, the structure of your document library is a very important piece. And I want to err on the side of caution when you are creating these folders and subfolders, because that is the traditional filing method when you are organizing your document library. SharePoint has some really unique features to modernize your document library and resolve some of the issues that there are with inconsistent naming and lost files with the traditional filing method. We'll take a look at those in just a moment, but in the meantime, I wanna show you how we can add some files. So if we go back to documents, so from this new dropdown at the top here, we have an assortment of documents that we can choose from. So let's go and add a Word document for our policies. And once that opens up, then you can select in this left area and give your document a name. Back in SharePoint, we can see that Word document has been added there. And one file format that I really enjoy is the ability to add a link to another web page. So there are some predefined options here but I'm going to add a page to the YouTube channel. And if you are enjoying this video, then let me know and give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Then we can create that link. And now you can provide links to common web pages and resources to your team within the document library. Number four is how we can add, move and delete contents within our document library. So here I have some files on my desktop and I can simply drag and drop them into this socials content folder right within my SharePoint library. On the top right here, you'll have a status of your document upload. And once it's complete, you'll see a notification like this. Within the social contents folder, we can easily drag and drop our content around. Another way to move files around is to select it and you can drag it to this documents area. You could drop it there, but if you hold it, and you'll be redirected and then you could drop it into a different folder. And the last way that we can move documents around is by hovering over the file, selecting the ellipses, and then going to move to. This will pop up a new window. We can navigate to socials and drop this one into Facebook. So we can see how moving files around is super easy. But if we, for example, accidentally delete a file, then that can be recovered for 93 days from the recycle bin. You can just select the file and then restore and it will go back to its original location. Tip number five is how we can create a separate document library within our SharePoint site. And this is a unique feature to SharePoint that allows us to modernize our document library. So let's create a separate library for our social content. We will go up to the home tab and then under this new drop down, we will go document library. There are some predefined templates here that you can choose from, but let's go with a blank library. We will give it a name of social content and add a description. And then this show in site navigation, if that's selected, then when we create this separate document library, 
it is going to be added to the left menu for easy access. Number six is how we can add columns to create a flat document library. And this is super cool. So we will go and select add column. We will go choice and then next. We will give our column a name. So we'll go with platforms. You can give it a description. And then for the choices here, I'm going to add those subfolders that we defined earlier. For choice number two, we can call it U2. And to change the color, we can just select the color picker and then pick the color that you would like to add. And here we can add Insta. You can add additional choices if you like and then just click the X to delete any of your additional options. There are some other settings at the bottom here, but let's accept the defaults and save. We will add another column, but this time we will hover between these two columns and then just click that little plus icon. This time I want to add the person that was assigned to the content. We will just call it assigned. Again, we'll accept the default settings and save. We will add another column. And this time I want to add a date column and we will give it a name of published and then just save. And the last column that I want to add is going to be a yes and no column. And this one is going to be to let us know if the content was sponsored or not. And this time there is a default value here. So anytime that you upload a file, it will default to that option. So I'm going to keep this as yes, but you could change it to no. We will save. There are some additional options here that would be more advanced. For example, a lookup column where you can link your contents from a SharePoint list or even a calculated column. I've done other videos on both of these topics and I'll include the link to them in the description. Once your columns are in there, then you can select your files and simply drag and drop them once again. And to organize these columns, then you can hover between two and adjust the column widths as you see fit. Or if there are any default ones that you would like to hide, then we can select the drop down carrot, go column settings, and then show and hide columns. You can just deselect or select the columns that you would like to keep. And just note that you're not going to be deleting these contents. There are some additional ones down here. Um, for example, like content type, which would give you the file type. Um, so this is just some additional information and you can select whatever information you like. Once you finish your selection, then you can just click apply. Number seven is how we can edit our columns in grid view. So if we select a file, and then go up to this information icon on the top right. And we can expand that file information card. And there are going to be some properties at the top here, which are most of those columns that we've just created. Then we move on to some activity of the file. So you can see some history and changes. And then there are going to be some additional details about the actual file itself. So from this property areas at the top, we can go through and, you know, pick this information that we're looking for as well as a published date and we'll leave that one as sponsored but it is so much easier to edit your columns in grid view so here we can hover over any of these little columns and you can just drag the information down and then you can also select within them and then you'll see those choices if any of them do vary for the date picker, it is quite a similar experience, but you can see how editing in grid view is so much easier than editing each of the individual cards, especially if you are going to be updating a lot of content at once. Once you have all of your information in there, then we can simply exit grid view. And here we have our flat document library, which puts everything into one area eliminating files being stored in different locations and also ensures that there is consistent naming of important details for each of your files, eliminating lost files or even duplicate files. But with all of that being said, if you are used to the traditional method of organizing your files into folders and subfolders, then having everything in one place can be a little bit daunting. So 
That leads us to tip number eight, which is how we can create custom views within our document library. To create the custom view, we will go up to all documents and then go create new view. We will give it a name. We'll call ours YouTube. And if your organization is going to be using a flat document library, then please comment below to let me know as I would love to know what other organizations are doing. There are some additional options at the bottom here, such as show as list, which will keep this layout here. Alternatively, you could put this into a calendar view or even into a gallery view, which is great if you have pictures that would make your content easier to identify with. At the bottom, we have this visibility. So if we leave it as make a public view, then everybody in this Microsoft 365 group is going to have access to this view. But if you are creating the view just for yourself, then you might want to untick this to save anyone else confusion. We'll leave this as public and then create. Now we can define our filters and sort for this custom view. So at the top, we can select the little filter icon. And since this is just for YouTube, I'm going to select YouTube only. We can close out of there. And then I also just want to sort this publish date by oldest to newest. Once you have defined your sorts and your filters, then we can go back up to this drop down carrot and then save view as. The name should be the same as what we just did and then save it. And now we can go to this drop down again and we can toggle between the different views. So if we go all documents, that's gonna be all of the contents within this document library. But if we go to our YouTube custom view, then we will see those predefined filters and sorts already set. So this is a great way for you to maintain that folder structure, but within the flat document library view, thereby eliminating any of those issues. Number nine is how we can add conditional formatting to our document library. So from this publish column, we'll select the drop down carrot, we'll call them settings and then format this column, manage rules and then show values as. We're going to now apply a condition, which will be if the publish column is on or after the day, then we want it to appear as blue and then we'll go back to this edit rule and we're going to add a new rule and we're going to say if the publish column is before the day we want it to appear as green we'll save this close the conditional formatting and we can see how conditional formatting creates a nice visual for our document library Number 10 is how we can add members and owners to our sites. So on the top right, we'll select member, then add members. And here we'll see that site owners have full control of the site content, theme, permission settings, site settings, and hub associations. Whereas site members can edit and view site content, including files, pages, lists, and navigation. So from the bottom here, we will search for Mike and then we can toggle between member or owner. I'll leave him as a member and then save. And there we go. So that is how we add members to our SharePoint site. Number 11 is how we can collaborate on files with team members and use versioning. So here I have this policy word document open in my SharePoint and then Mike is working on the same document within his. And we can see from this little marker here that we are both collaborating on this document at the same time. And if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me know that you enjoy the content and helps me create more content like this for you. Another way that we can collaborate on files is through the comments. So if we select new comment, then I can mention team members by pressing the at symbol and then searching for their name. So here I'm going to comment on Mike and even assign this comment to him. And then I will send it. And you can see that Mike has been notified on this side. So if we scroll on over, then he can mention me and say done. Then the great thing is that once you have finished 
completing any of the adjustments on these comments, you can select the ellipses and then go resolve task. This catch up drop down here is another great feature. And if you scroll on down, then we can go to version history and toggle between the different versions of the document and even restore or save a new copy of that version. Number 12 is how we can sync our SharePoint files and document libraries to our desktop. So SharePoint is a cloud service, meaning that you can access the contents and the files within your browser from anywhere, which is great, but some people like to open these within their desktop and then edit them in the desktop apps. An easy way to do that is to sync your document library to your desktop. So if we just click this sync, then we can see that SharePoint is syncing my files to my desktop. If you have not already set up OneDrive for a desktop, then you might need to follow some additional prompts before you can sync your file. Once your files have synced, then you will be able to select that SharePoint document library from within your file explorer and open up your files from there. Tip number 13 is how we can convert our SharePoint site to a Microsoft team. So we can go up to this plus icon here, create team, and then more create team options and from group. So these are going to be all of your 365 groups that are not yet added in Microsoft Teams. And this is that monster dash party group that we've already created. So if we just select add to team, then it is going to take that 365 group and convert it into a Microsoft team. Tip number 14 is how we can access our files within our document library. There are a few ways that we can do this, but the best way to search for any of your files is within OneDrive. We can access OneDrive from the waffle icon in any of our apps and then locate OneDrive. You can also access OneDrive within Teams by selecting the ellipses on the left navigation and locating OneDrive. I would also just recommend right clicking on OneDrive and pinning it to your navigation so that you can access it easily later. We also have a similar experience within Outlook. Once again, you can select the more apps icon and locate OneDrive and then right click and pin it to your navigation. Within OneDrive, you can locate your whole SharePoint document libraries under the quick access area here. So here we have the monster dash party, which is the general document library for this 365 group. And if you see any that have a 365 group name and then a dash, then those are going to be separate document libraries within that 365 group. You can also use the search bar at the top of any of these apps. So within OneDrive, there are some additional drop down settings here where you can filter your document search for the current library, current site, all files, or your whole organization. We have a similar experience within the SharePoint search bar or the team search bar. And one thing that I really like about the search bar is that we can not only search for just the file names, but we can also use these tags that we've defined in these columns. So here we can see that that car and the monster files are part of that YouTube category. To learn more tips on using SharePoint, then check out this video here.